Last weekend, I accompanied my human on a flight, and there was another service dog on the plane, so I tried to talk shop. Cool vest. You know, I didn't see that one on the website where my human clicked for mine. That's because you're wearing stolen valor! He yelled at me that real service dogs have to go through hours and hours of training, and it's not just that they're super special good girls with a perfect baby face. I don't know whose aunt needs to hear this, but your therapeutic Yorkie you carry around in a shopping basket? The one barking at everything that breathes and pissing all the time? Yeah, not a service animal. Might as well be carrying wads of cash around to wipe up the mess. Because girl, I'm cracking down on y'all and making sure you get the fines and charges you deserve. You mess with my Girl Scouts? You handle Miss Group Leader herself. Hey Girl Scout, what's shaking? How have you been? I personally have been amazing. I recently posted on my community tab to share more about me, and the response was insanely positive. I'm so glad to be able to open up about the girl behind the Danny Phantom Sprite, and I'll be sure to keep sharing more to let you in behind the scenes and get to know you more. And please, I do want to know you more, so send me ideas of topics you want me to cover. I've been asking you all to send me some video ideas that are a bit different to the fake disorder cringe, but still in the channel's scope of content. And I had one particular request that stood out to me. Someone who has a service dog opened up and shared some stories about how there's a surge of people faking having service dogs in order to gain special privileges and not have to follow the same pet rules as others with regular non-service animals. You know, because having a disability totally sucks and no thanks, but they're so lucky that their dog gets to come into the store with them so it's only fair that I get to bring mine in too. Otherwise known as using a group of people to receive a benefit that to them is not a benefit more so than essential to navigating the world. Ableist stuff, as we so like to call out on the channel. It is shocking how many people try to slide past the system, and the consequences of this one are dark. Not only is this causing tension and doubt and animosity towards those who genuinely need their animal for medical reasons, but it actually has been preventing these animals from properly doing their jobs. And that's scary. So today, I wanted to look at this trend, clear up some key differences in terms in the service animal world, and of course, call out the people who are creating stigma and being selfish. Enough talk. Let's just jump right into things. Service animals are not pets. They're allowed in public spaces that pets aren't because they're officially trained to do a specific job. If you see them in public, leave them alone. They're working. Emotional support animals, while also important, are not necessarily trained and not allowed everywhere. And unlike service dogs, they can be any pet. They're often confused with psychiatric service dogs, which are trained for all of these things and fall into the first category. Let's talk a little about the laws in the US surrounding this topic to clarify some stuff. Stop! You violated the law. A service dog is defined by the American Disability Act as a dog that has been individually trained to do work or perform tasks for an individual with a disability. This does include mental and physical disabilities. The dog must be trained to take a specific action when needed to assist the person with a disability. This will include alerts, mobility, interactions, guiding, and retrieval, among others. The dog also has to maintain proper obedience such as being housebroken, show no signs of aggression, be under the handler's control at all times, follow hygienic policies, and must be fully vaccinated to the certain area code. The dogs that qualify are then allowed in any area the handler is, such as restaurants, hotels, places of work, etc. There are laws protecting handlers from discrimination, but owners of establishments and employees may ask, one, if a dog is a service dog required because of a disability, and two, what work or task has the dog been trained to perform? Once answered, and if it is indeed a service dog, then no further enquiries can be asked and they must allow the dog into the establishment. If the answers are no, or if the dog is not following proper obedience, or the handler is following dangerous behaviors such as letting the dog ride in a shopping cart, then the owners can ask for the dog to be removed from the premises completely legally. So that's the laws around that. Pretty straightforward. However, there is another type of pet in the US commonly called an emotional support dog. They haven't been trained to perform a specific task and they aren't qualified as service dogs under the ADA and they don't get to follow the same rules. They're usually therapeutic and people use them as companions to help when they suffer from mental health issues primarily. Again, not a specific task, just being a friend or a companion. Now that we have a little bit of clarification, we can get into looking at the faking trend. Emotional support's not a service dog. You can't. Well, you know what? There's psychiatric service animals for that. Emotional support's different. I have severe panic attacks, okay? Remember when I have aprophobia? You know that is the fear of people. Yeah, your dog just Wait, tried stop. to attack our service animals. No, my dog is four months old in training. He's four months old.
it's always then he's training. not ready for a non-pet friendly store yet. If he's okay. still acting out, has, you need to, to train him attack, okay? in a pet friendly store. It's, he's not he's trained. Right there, like pet, if it's touching him. That doesn't That's do why. anything. Emotional support is not a service animal. A service animal is a task trained dog to aid a disability, which they can do for panic disorder. But you need to train it. Okay, it's tough. That's what he's going through, okay? As soon as I walk by, she's like, it's my training for emotional support. And I told her, I was like, emotional support is not a service animal. Emotional support is not a service animal. By that lady's logic, toddlers who are potty training should be excused for shitting on the floor and we should all have to deal with it in public because the kid's learning and he's gonna make mistakes and it's not her fault he's not trained yet. No, I'm not gonna put him in pull-ups until he's trained. Why stop there? Let's just excuse anyone who breaks the rules and when questioned explain that they're learning, so get off her back. He just got out of jail and he's learning how to stop committing second degree murder. It happens, we mess up from time to time. Get off your high horse for not being a murderer. God, ableist. This lady has everything twisted. Not only is she admitting it is an emotional support dog and not a service dog and is not qualified to be there, but even if it was one, its behavior is considered means to ask for the dog to be removed from the building. Having a service dog is not a free for all to bring your dog where it pleases and to not have to follow the rules. And having mental or physical issues is not an automatic pass to be able to bend the rules. Worst of all, in this situation, the dog is acting aggressively towards a real service dog. And this could lead to harm or distraction that prevents the service dog from recognizing when it needs to perform the task it's trained to do. Bit of stigma, bit of crime, bit of selfishness and disregard for human life. Truly a recipe for a disgusting human being. A fake service dog nearly lunged at me while I was shopping at Target. That's not a service animal. All right, what task does it perform then? What task does your service animal perform? Because that's a service animal. That's what a service animal does. Do you want to see my cards? Don't you know the cards are fake? That's a scam. It's a scam. Yeah. Yeah, your dog's pulling. That's not a service animal. Not a service animal. And if you have papers, you got scammed. Faking? Oh yeah? Well, um, I have papers saying I'm the coolest YouTuber in the world, so what do you know? Yeah, it's written in crayon on the back of my Walmart receipt because the YouTube Association ran out of printer paper and Sharpies, okay? It's obviously true if I have a piece of paper that says so. It's not like I just made it myself in my car at 3am when I was crying and wanted to raise my own self-esteem. <laughs> I also have a card that says I have a medical condition that makes me throw punch everyone that bothers me that I bought on Etsy, so back off or else I'll do it and I won't even get in any trouble. It's totally not just a scam that holds no value under the law. Wait, what do you mean I'm getting arrested for throat punching this guy? What? In certain states, it is considered a misdemeanor to fake a service dog. It's kind of hard to tell if the person lies when they answer your questions unless you get the authorities involved, they don't answer, or if the dog is blatantly misbehaving. But things like cards, harnesses, and other identification that quote unquote prove you have a service animal aren't really valid. Most of them, if not all, are scams. You can have a service animal without special vests on. Your animal can be self-trained and still be considered a valid service animal. And one can be professionally trained and not be because they're not trained to perform a specific task. And while you can register your service dog to help protect yourself further, it is not a requirement of the law. This type of person creates stigma that service dogs without harnesses and cards are faking, when it's not even the legal requirement and often is actually the first thing fakers do to try and cover their trail. Remember, illnesses can be invisible, and not everyone feels the need to make it clear that their dog is a service dog because they just want to go out and not prove themselves to others. I personally wouldn't carry around my meds to show people I have mental illness so they believe me. It's no one's business, so I show the same respect to others. A great rule of thumb is to always ask for permission to pet someone's pet and respect when they say no without fighting them on it. It could be that the dog's aggressive to people and they're protecting you, or it's working, or they just don't want you near them. And hey, all are valid reasons. Does not mean they're faking or that they're rude. As I like to say, don't assume because it makes an ass out of you and me. Yeah, yeah, that's not a service dog. And hit it, that's great animal abuse. That's wonderful. If, if she misses an alert because of that, then the store is That's not a service dog. That's not a service dog.
That's not a service dog. Leave it, Maya. Leave it. I mean, obviously this one makes sense. You know, whenever I'm having an ADHD attack, I obviously have to punish Ridley for not helping me by drop kicking her down the road. Disclaimer at PETA, it's a joke. ADHD attacks aren't real. I don't need an excuse to drop kick the cat. I can just do that whenever I want. Okay, okay, no more jokes about football kicking my pet. Sorry, I don't do that. Not only is this person blatantly faking having an animal and putting them in a shopping cart after the dog was bothering other dogs, which both can be means to be kicked out, but they're also hitting their dog. Let me make this very clear. Handlers never punish their service dogs by abusing them. You know who does that? Evil losers. Same kind of people who fake having a service dog, actually. To try and make it seem like a normal thing and to somehow excuse hurting an animal under the guise of it being a service dog is so wrong. Way to be a shit pet owner and a person with no regard for their role in endangering disabled people. The fact that no one was angry over this except for the real handler. I mean, none of these people were even aware that her punishing her dog wasn't some weird rule handlers get to do when their dog misbehaves. People already try to fight that service dogs are abused because they're working and try to make people who need them look like bad people. This woman is making handlers seem like bad people by pretending to be one and doing the things animal rights groups will have a field day with. If your goal is to get service dogs banned so no one can have their pets indoors or function like normal people, congrats, Karen. You're one step closer. I thought you were talking about me for a second. Yep, there go. Whoa. No, they're not. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna go back. Didn't realize if someone tried to call me out, I could just know you them without any consequence. I'll have to try that if I ever get canceled. No, you. While it did seem more to me that this fake service dog was friendly and excited to see another dog more than lunging, the message this is sending is still very wrong. Apart from distracting the service dog, who needs to be alert for things like a chemical change that their humans may exhibit prior to a medical issue, you can see at the end how the handler was affected negatively by this encounter. Being worried about your pet and service dog being hurt or attacked is a real fear in the community. Because unfortunately, these fakers bring their dogs to places they shouldn't and don't keep an eye on them or don't really care if they go off the walls because they're not really there to do a job. Imagine losing your best friend because of someone's negligence that should be entirely preventable by enforcing laws better. And let's not forget about money. People often spend a large amount of money on service dogs and a lot of people don't get full coverage. Some people don't care if dogs come into a store because they like them, but it's because of this lack of strict rules that people feel above the law and like it's not a big deal to bring a dog inside. And on a wider scale, you're teaching people to associate friendly and jumpy pets with service dogs. And that leads to people doing stuff like this. Do you have a high risk? Do you have anything else? No, I'm the owner of the company. Okay, well, that was very rude how she definitely It talked literally to me. says, do okay. not pet on every you single dog. You should have a sign, number one. There number is two. like four signs. You should say, there are four signs. She signs should not say, leash alone. No. She should Excuse say, sorry, the these dogs are in. No. The dogs are in training. Sorry. That could have been nicer. She could have approached you. You asked the question. She and I pet the dog, and she said no. You, she should have said that the they were in training. You can walk away now. I don't owe you anything. Bye. I didn't ask you. I did not ask you. You, you came over. I shouldn't say no to someone doing something I don't want and should apologize to them for not letting them do the thing to me. Lady, imagine if a dude groped you and you said no, but he said, you should be apologizing for not letting me touch you. There should be signs around saying don't touch women. Does that sound nice? What happened to no means no? Who owes you an explanation? The fact of the matter is, people need to have very clear-cut rules and a very good understanding of what is and isn't allowed with service dogs. By people like the last TikTok having dogs that are friendly and looking for pets means that Karens get mad when they're told otherwise because they feel like it isn't true. And that's not fair on service dog handlers to have the burden of responsibility placed on them when it really should be that the laws are enforced better. We wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, and a Happy Lord, and may all of your Christmas be well. Focus, pickle, focus, focus. We wish you a Merry Christmas. For a dog named Pickle, she sure handled such a sour experience with ease. She's learning to look at those toys and think they're not a big deal. I mean, I can't blame her for thinking this was jarring. She relished the moment and remained cool as a cucumber. I'm Pickle Rick! Side note, why are so many Christmas themed things so terrifying? 
That claymation movie that's a cult classic is actually what my nightmares are made of. And honestly, I would bark too if I had to witness it unexpectedly. Look, this is just as important as knowing all the rules. Dogs aren't perfect robots. They're dogs, and they do mess up. I mean, where would this dog have ever seen this type of thing before? That's scary. The important thing is the owner training them through it and not letting the barking or change in behavior disrupt others or yelling at the dog and making sure to just reel it back in. We have to make sure we aren't destigmatizing service animals by accidentally stigmatizing them. Nobody's perfect, but it's pretty darn obvious when someone's trying. Just something to bear in mind too. This trend is really damaging and we need to start figuring out how to spread more education so that these dogs can do their tasks without people faking affecting them. The lack of education surrounding the differences between a recognized service dog and an emotional support animal is astonishing. Even those who buy a pet don't understand the difference and while it's sad that they're being scammed, it is very important to do proper research. Even as a therapeutic tool, an ESA is not a service dog. So if you have a companion to love as recommended by a doctor, still not a service dog. If you see a breeder not being forthcoming about this information or making it seem like it's a service dog when it isn't, that is very important to point out to potential buyers or make authorities aware of. People who work in establishments need to become familiar with the proper questions to ask. And if someone is lying to get their dog into the establishment, then it's important to call authorities. It sounds harsh, but until people are punished more for their faking and recognize what they're doing is harmful, they'll keep doing it. If you see a so-called service dog behaving badly, it's important to get them removed from the property. Worrying about accidentally discriminating against someone and as a result not acting when these things happen is contributing to the issue. Service dog owners understand that behavior is very important, and so it is rare that a trained animal will act out. It's best to assume if they are, they're faking, and know that you are acting legally by removing them due to behavior, whether they end up being fake or not. The subscriber that provided me information has confirmed this and said that the laws can mean well, but until people become more informed and get the laws enforced consistently, people will slip through and use excuses and continue to abuse the system. I understand that an animal is someone's whole life. I couldn't imagine losing Ridley and she's an amazing tool to help me with my mental health. I got her because she was a recommended option for me as a coping mechanism. Petting her fur helps me ground myself when I'm dissociated and having responsibility for her forces me to get up and do something on the days that I don't feel like getting up. But at the end of the day, she's just a pet that I love very much and who saves me by existing, not by doing anything to directly save my life. It is extremely irresponsible to even suggest that this is the same as a pet trained to perform tasks that are potentially life-saving to someone who otherwise is not able to perform these tasks without a caregiver or whose life would be very limited or difficult without the help. To put these essential resources and those who need them at risk of harm because of a selfish reason is disgusting. Even if a pet is well-behaved and someone feels like the rules don't apply to their dog, at the end of the day, invalidating the sheer amount of time, money, and effort spent on training service dogs to be an option for people to live independently and not rely on other people all the time is not okay. Like we talk about in my mental health videos, people with disabilities just want to be seen as normal people. Their dogs do the things that they need to help them navigate the world as normally as possible. To have this influx of people faking means that people with service dogs are now harassed and not believed. People aren't respecting service dogs' boundaries and will try to touch them and pet them despite the owner asking them not to because they don't understand that the dog is busy. Other dogs will attack service dogs in places that they shouldn't have to be worried about being attacked. And a lot of people aren't being believed and are turned away from entry with their service animal despite following the legal guidelines. And while they can take legal action against this, in the moment, they're unable to live their normal lives and it's a lot of hassle for them that shouldn't be so prevalent. If we want everyone to see disabled people as normal people, we need to normalize the education and understanding of why these pets are tools, like a wheelchair, and why people use them. Not for special privileges, but to function and keep up with a world designed for the able-bodied. These trendy fakers might think they're normalizing these things, but when they're not following the laws and not explaining the difference between an ESA and a real service dog, they encourage others to ignore the differences and continue stigmatizing and confusing the real definitions. And that is a serious problem. I think that's all I can say on that. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you think this topic is important to share, tell the algorithm you want it out there by liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing, and engaging. We can talk more about this together on my Discord, link in the description, and be sure to let me know what other topics like this I should cover. I am so not a TikTok person, so please show me what's trending and problematic so I can spread awareness like this. And that's all from me. Hope you all have an amazing day, and I shall see you all in the next video. Peace out, Girl Scouts. Thanks for watching.